Hey guys, what is up? It is the Fast Break Report here bringing you guys another vlog and well, the Pacers got their asses handed to them by the Knicks 130 to 121. And this game was very very interesting because uh Jalen Brunson got injured. We got up by 12 points. OG Ananobi had the game of his fucking life and he got injured. And then in the fourth quarter, we just decided, well, defense wasn't going to be a part of our game plan anymore. Uh, you know what, man? It's it's funny because the Knicks are getting in their own way, in, in a way. Like, I'm just going to call it what it is. We, we, lost, we lost both games at the Garden. I've kind of figured we were going to. Granted, game one was fucking handed to the Knicks. That much, like, everybody pretty much universally agrees with that, except for Knicks fans. Um, but it's just the idea, the Pacers are undefeated at home, they're 8-0, and last night, Rick Carlisle had enough, Rick Carlisle got tossed from last night's game, and he really lost his mind over that double dribble call, and you know what, I don't necessarily think it was the double dribble call itself. It's the idea that they overturned the double dribble call, but they wouldn't overturn the fucking kicked ball uh, uh, call that was blatantly fucking obvious it wasn't a kicked ball the game before that. And there's been so much shit that was wrong with the officiating in these past two games. Like, Rick Carlisle has gone to the extent of submitting 78 missed foul calls in favor of the of the Knicks uh, based on the first two games. And there was one play where Josh Hart shoved Tyrese Halliburton in the back, which pissed a lot of people off considering Tyrese Halliburton is having back spasms. But it's just the idea. These games have been very, very poorly officiated. Um, granted, I don't think officiating was the reason that we lost game two, but I definitely think it was the reason we lost game one. And right now, there's just, game two was kind of a mess. Uh, Jalen Brunson went out, Jalen Brunson came back, I was kind of shocked he came back, but he, uh, he came back, and... OG Ananobi was, like, making fucking everything, but... The thing is, like, we did, we went to a trapping defense, right? And on Jalen Brunson specifically, that's, I think, the correct move. The problem is Aaron Neesmith kept getting lost in translation and decided he was going to let D, uh, Dante DiVincenzo do his fucking taxes from the three-point line. I mean, Dante DiVincenzo could have booked a flight to Haiti on the amount of time he was given on the three-point line, just how open he was. It was fucking insane. Aaron Neesmith, I don't know what the fuck that was, dude, but... I, you need to play better defense than that. Like, you you can't leave Josh Hart and Dante DiVincenzo wide open on the three-point line. Josh Hart has turned into Steph Curry in the fucking playoffs. He went from shooting 31% in the regular season from three to 45% in the playoffs. So, these are not guys that you can just leave open for three-point shots. I will say this. The coaching is a little irritating because TJ McConnell clearly like, is able to throw Jalen Brunson off his game a little bit, and for whatever reason, Rick Carlisle, Andrew Nemhard just doesn't get up in Jalen Brunson at all for whatever reason, like, he gives him room to move, and you can't do that against Jalen Brunson, I understand Jalen Brunson's a fucking midget, but you can't give him space, you can't let him get to the free throw line, like, just don't let Jalen Brunson get open, or get to the free throw line, if he gets to the paint, you're fucked, make him shoot mid-range jump shots, not these little fucking 10-footers that are coming from the free throw line, because that's where he likes to get to to do his work but if you can make him like take contested three-point shots and just get him off his spot you have a chance to beat the Knicks and for whatever reason we keep leaving that up to Andrew Nemhard and Andrew Nemhard's not getting it done but TJ McConnell TJ McConnell was clearly getting under Jalen Brunson's skin they were chat you know chirping at each other at the free throw line and shit so we know TJ McConnell is the best defender on our team for Jalen Brunson. Now, how long can you actually do that? I don't know, but this game was a fucking horror story. Like, I know everybody's talking about the refs, the refs, the refs. And yes, in game one, you have you have an argument. In game two, you simply don't. Uh, in game two, we were up by 12 points, 
And when we came out of halftime, we got fucking demolished in the third quarter. I think we, we got outscored 33 to 15 or 36 to 15. Don't quote me on it. But the only person who showed up to play for us was Tyrese Halliburton, which is very shocking considering in the entire playoffs, Tyrese Halliburton hasn't been much better than a 12 and 12 guy. Um, granted, I do think Tyrese Halliburton has gained his confidence back. But then again, in the second half, all of a sudden Jalen Brunson comes back and they go back into this like in and out zone defense that the Knicks run and Tyrese Halliburton said, yeah, I'm not shooting the ball anymore. So he did have a couple clutch threes at the end of that game, but it's just the idea. Everybody needs to be better. Miles Turner played like shit. Aaron Neesmith played like shit. Uh, like really, there I, I, it was pretty obvious. The only fucking guy that showed up to play for the Pacers last night was Tyrese Halliburton. I mean, if we look at the box score, I mean, Pascal Siakam had 14 points and shot seven of 18. Neesmith had six points. Miles had six points. Nemhard had 15. Nemhard played all right. Obi Toppin showed up. T.J. McConnell was 10 and 12. He was good, and Tyrese Halliburton showed up. Uh, Ben Shepard did all right, but the thing is, you really need to have good games out of Siakam and Turner, and if Neesmith is going to play 34 minutes, he needs to play better than he did, Uh, so... You know, I this I kind of expected this. Like I, I even said it originally in my in my series preview that like we always have that one bad game, and I feel like game two was that one bad game. So <coughs> <coughs> excuse me. We'll have to see what Friday brings. But it seems like Tom Thibodeau's learning a hard lesson, ain't he? He's learning that uh yeah, you can't play seven guys for forty plus minutes a night and expect to for them to hold up throughout the entire playoffs. I will say this to Knicks fans, you might beat us, maybe, you might beat us doing this dumb shit of running guys for 40 fucking minutes a night, but against the Celtics, it's not going to work. Like, if you beat us, you got to play the Celtics with half a fucking roster. You lost Mitchell Robinson, you might have just lost OG Ananobi, Jalen Brunson's questionable, I mean, Bojan Bogdanovich is done, I, I mean... Are we not learning anything? Has Tom Thibodeau learned nothing in his years of coaching? I understand that Tom Thibodeau has a very cutthroat way of coaching. And I understand that he doesn't like to play fucking anybody that can't play defense. But it's just the idea. In the playoffs, you pay a price for that. And, you know, it's getting to a point now where uh, it's time to break out your fucking checkbook. Because... OG Ananobi's injured now. Jalen Brunson's injured now. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if Josh Hart gets injured at some point. I mean, it's just the idea, how long do you think you can keep doing this? I understand, you know, you have Miles McBride. um, You had Mitchell Robinson. You don't have him anymore. But now you have Preston Achua, who really doesn't play like a big. But it's just the idea. The Knicks roster is slowly but surely getting fucking, like, decrepitated as we go on with this, this series. The, the longer he keeps playing these guys these minutes, the more, the more there is a chance of them getting hurt. Josh, this is the second game in a row Josh Hart has played 48 fucking minutes, right? The guy at least deserves a water break. I mean, he's not even getting that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I understand Josh Hart is good, but bro, like, it just, I understand if they don't play Josh Hart or, like, it, it could be that Tom Thibodeau thinks if he, as long as he plays Josh Hart the entire game, they can win, which is a reasonable assertion, uh, assertion being that, you know, he rebounds the basketball very well, he's shooting very well, he's a facilitator, he's a, he's a triple-double threat every fucking night, so I understand that aspect of it, but the other part of me, like, the New Yorker in me, is going what the fuck are you doing? You know, like, that's that's the other part of it. Like, the Pacers are my favorite team. The, the Knicks being that they're my my home hometown team, I look for them to do good, but this is a team that's like, even if they beat us, they're on a pathway to just, like, ruining guys' careers. Remember, I think it was like Luol Dang or whatever, like, he... <coughs> He had an injury that, like, really, really fucked up his entire life. Like, it's just the idea. You you cannot play dudes this long and expect to do it the entire playoffs. So, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. If I'm a betting man, 
OG Ananobi's not going to play game three. And if Jalen Brunson plays game three, I'd be very shocked. Uh, mostly because like usually the next day with those ankle injuries, they swell up and get really bad. Um, I would be, I would not be shocked if Jalen Brunson misses two games, uh, which means, uh, you know, the Pacers got to take care of business at home. Like I said previously, they're eight and at home, but we did everything bad yesterday in the fourth quarter in the second half. Like we didn't rebound. Well, we didn't play defense at all. I mean, we, we, <sighs> We just we forgot how to do fucking everything in the second quarter, uh, second half yesterday. So we're going home to Indiana. I understand why Rick Car- uh, Rick Carlisle submitted the plays that he did to the league office in hopes that maybe he'll get a more fairly officiated game. Uh, you know, I don't want to blame it on officiating, but uh, Alex Golden did put out a tweet that uh, it did state, if I'm correct, that the the coaching. The coaches for game two, the lineup was, the crew chief was Mark Davis. The referee was Josh Tiven. The umpire was J.B. DeRosa. And the alternate was Ray Acosta. The replay center was Zach uh, Zarba. The Pacers' record for the regular season with these officials was 7-8 and eight combined. The Knicks, with that same officiating crew, were 9-2. and two. So, and that, those are regular season's records. So, you know, I don't, I don't want to say that like the odds were stacked against us, but the odds were kind of stacked against us, even with that. So I don't know, man, you know what? It's going to be what it's going to be, but I have a feeling the Pacers win game three. I have a feeling they win game four, and I actually think they're probably going to win game five. Uh, if Jalen Brunson and OGN and Obi don't play <coughs> in, in that game, uh, for, yeah, in game five, um, that's going to be a, a very big, very big deal for the Knicks. Um, but who knows? They could be back by then. I don't know. But I'm kind of hoping that this team gets their shit together over this home stretch. They, uh, Halliburton looks like he, he maybe gained his confidence back a little bit in game two. But it wasn't good. It was ugly. I hope to not see it again. Uh, Andrew Nebhard needs to get up in Jalen Brunson. Like, stop playing Jalen Brunson like a fucking bitch. Like, I get that, like, you don't want to touch him because he'll, he's going to get free throws. Jalen Brunson shot 14 fucking free throws in game one. So I understand why you don't want to get up in him. But at this point, I kind of don't care. Uh, at this point, punch him in the fucking face if you have to. I, it's just the idea, like, it's getting to a point where... Like, we're so bad at defense that Isaiah Hartenstein is flirting with triple doubles, okay? Like, we need to tighten up the defense. We need to make our, our open jumpers. Uh, you know, even the, the there was a rough start to the game. Then in the second quarter in game two, we, we started to click. And then it all went downhill after the third quarter. So, uh, yeah, hopefully, hopefully things get better. I, I think they will. But, and also, uh, like, Rick Carlisle's got to stop bitching about officiating. That That's the other thing. Like, I understand. It's one thing to bitch about officiating. It's another thing to bitch about small market teams. And I understand there is a bias there. It is harder for small market teams regardless because they don't attract star potential. But it's just the idea, like, I, I feel like the whole reason Rick got mad about the, the, the double dribble is because it got overturned, but the kickball... Uh, called the game before it didn't get overturned and we were not allowed to challenge it so I, I understand why maybe he was really frustrated with that uh, also there was all there was a lot of like foul calls like things that the Knicks did that just simply wasn't getting called so I don't know man it, it's always mind-blowing to me how the fuck the officiating always goes to shit during the playoffs you can watch a regular season game and be like yeah you know what the officiating looks fine like yeah you might have one or two bad calls in the playoffs it's like every fucking every fucking game there's like seven or eight missed calls and so I don't know I don't know what to expect but I hope game three is better so tell me what you guys think about this down below in the comment section below. A like helps me out. Subscribe if you guys want to see more on the Fast Break Report. And I'm out of this motherfucker. Peace, guys.